Rowell Lake lies about 65 miles west of St. Augustine, Florida, and about 35 miles north, northeast of Gainesville. Via the Green Route, it lies about six and a half miles southeast of Stark. The parking lot, boat ramp, and connecting canal to the lake are all well-maintained and scenic. Despite the attraction of no docks or lakefront houses, Rowell Lake, like many shallow lakes in the southeastern U.S., is highly infested with the invasive hydrilla verticulate. Once seriously infested, water transportation and recreational water activities are severely restricted. Under such conditions, property owners become fearful of property value erosion and scream for solution, which then become political issues. Since the 1960s, the uh, primary solution to the hydrilla issue has been herbicidal programs that suppress summer growth. However, in 1994, a series of incidents began across the southeastern U.S. that would foretell of complications for which there has been no solution to date. The referenced incidents involves the largest and fastest kill-off of bald eagles recorded in the southeastern United States. By 1998, the kill-off was attributed to, without a total understanding of the causal factors, a disease known as avian vacular myelinopathy, or AVM. However, when it was discovered that the disease extended beyond bald eagles, it was renamed to VM. Fortunately, an aquatic scientist at the University of Georgia, Dr. Susan Wilde, began to study AVM in 2001. Dr. Wilde noticed that the coots and other waterfowl in the targeted areas were becoming sick and couldn't fly or swim. Consequently, they became easy prey for the bald eagles. Interestingly, the uh, waterfowl symptoms were similar to those of the afflicted eagles. With further study, it was found that both species had lesions on their brain and spinal cords. At this point, she suspected that the condition involved a food chain issue. It also followed that the most common original food source in the targeted areas was hydrilla. On further study, she found that the hydrilla hosted a unique form of cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, which do sometimes produce toxins that are dangerous to fish. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Weil was unable to identify a toxin related to the cyanobacteria in spite of its suspicious nature. Consequently, she teamed up with Timo Neidemeyer, a German biochemist, in 2011. Eventually, the team did discover that there was a neurotoxin that developed when the cyanobacteria was exposed to bromine-based herbicides used to kill off the hydrilla. The toxin was named atothonotoxin, abbreviated AETX, which is Greek for eagle killer. Perhaps the most profound takeaway from the 25-year-old uh, research is that VM may afflict any waterfowl that feeds on hydrilla treated with bromine-based herbicides. And to this day, bromine-based herbicides continue to be used on the hydrilla. Also, VM verifiably afflicts many birds, reptiles, frogs, and worms associated with the food chain that originates with the infested hydrilla. Likewise, there's no evidence that it does not afflict mammals, including humans. Perhaps a more direct concern for duck hunters is warranted. Despite the oxygen depletion when the hydrilla dies and other recreational inconveniences, the healthy and heavy mats of hydrilla are rich with crustacean and small aquatic life that attracts ducks and duck hunters. Again, there's no verifiable link between the afflicted waterfowl and humans, but a word of caution for duck hunters. Proceed at your own risk. Once again, we find an example where we have been incapable or unwilling to regulate and protect our natural resources. 
Now we're faced with the challenge of correcting our mistakes, or at least managing them. Hopefully the measures designed to control hydrilla will not present more negative repercussions than the ones they're designed to improve. Now don't forget, if you enjoyed this presentation, like and subscribe.